Hey, Stan Deaton with the Georgia Historical Society. Welcome back. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. On the 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year. Those are the opening lines of a famous poem written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow called Paul Revere's Ride. It was written in 1861, and generations of American school children had to learn that poem. The anniversary of Paul Revere's ride is coming up. April 18th marks the 245th anniversary of that famous ride on that Tuesday night. April 19th, of course, marks the anniversary of the Battles of Lexington and Concord, which began the military phase of the American Revolution. I thought it would be a good time to sort of look back at this mythic event and how it grew in American history and the purpose that it served. Earlier this year, I read uh, a great book by Esther Forbes, called Paul Revere and the World He Lived In. I bought this book when I was in graduate school in part because I was really attracted to Harvey Dunn's uh, painting Paul Revere. Dunn studied under Howard Pyle and was part of the Brandywine School. This book was written in 1942 and actually won the Pulitzer Prize for History in 1943. Forbes is one of the first practitioners of social history, and she only focuses on a, the ride for a few pages in a book that spans over 500. Now, if you want to know every single thing there is to know about the event Paul Revere's Ride, this is the book for you. David Hackett Fisher's monumental 1994 study, Paul Revere's Ride. Revere was really, he was first born in 1735, he was 40 years old that night. He was a Boston silversmith, and he had been in the employ of the Boston Committee of Correspondence for several years. He was a post rider, carrying news as far away as Philadelphia sometimes, and on the night of the 18th, of course, he was famously riding into the countryside to alert the militia that the, Boston, that the British troops in Boston were on the move. Eventually, they would go all the way to Concord, 20 miles away. Now, Revere was really a, just a regional folk hero, uh, even up until his death in 1818 at the age of 83 years old. Um, as the children of the people who lived through the Revolution, children and grandchildren realized that that generation was dying out, much as what happened with the veterans of World War II. They began to really cast those people literally and figuratively in bronze and make heroes of the revolutionary generation. In 1861, as America faced civil war, Longfellow wrote his poem, and it was published in the Atlantic Monthly in January of 1861, and it absolutely captured the imagination of the reading public and made a national hero of Paul Revere. Now, it also took many historical liberties. Longfellow sort of obliterated the other, other writers who were out that night, Dr. Samuel Prescott, who actually made it all the way to Concord, William Dawes, who was writing and, and was captured with Revere in, uh, just outside of Lexington, but it didn't matter. Uh, as the centennial of the, Re of the revolution came on in 1875, Revere became even more of a national hero. You saw towns named for him all over America. In 1885, Boston commissioned a statue near the Old North Church where the lanterns had been hung famously uh, that night in, in 1775. And that statue was finally cast in bronze in 1940 as America was just about to enter World War II. And the figure on horseback is this militant, almost superhero figure, the horse as well, at a time when America was going to take on both the Japanese and the Nazis in this great war. He was a symbol of American strength and American courage and American honor. And so he has come down to us today, even as the myth of the lone rider on horseback has been debunked. Uh, you can still see Paul Revere's work or the company that he founded in 1801, Revere Copper. You can go online and still see their work. If you come to Savannah and go to Christ Church on Johnson Square, you can hear the bells cast by he and his son, one of over 400 that they cast in his lifetime. Born on the night wind of the past, through all our history to the last, in the hour of darkness and peril and need, the people will awaken to listen and hear the hurrying hoofbeats of that steed and the midnight message of Paul Revere, 245 years ago. I'm Stan Deaton with the Georgia Historical Society. As always, thank you for watching.